time in But you must set the board before you dive in That's free game Valuable as EA on the PS And yes, we in the game Thank you, PS All our family started in the PJs The question is What the generation after see next The lesson is Roll the dice and level up Why repeat the cycle? Rather here I'm better than you Then I'm just like you Once they say you better than who Then who don't like you? Guess that's just the selfish in you This ain't a rival Pray these words a blessing to you This ain't the Bible But all these verses written in red It's for survival When you hear all these visions I shared It's to remind you To do what you desire to That way they can't deny you Set the board That's right, that's right If you hear the applause Then you know the cause We are back here on Nitty Gritty Podcast With our special guest This big ass pimple on my face That will not go away What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Kane, how you doing today? I'm good, man. How you feeling, bro? It's been a week. It has been a week, it bro. It has been a week, but we are back here. Episode not one, not two, not three, but four. Yes, sir. Episode four. And Episode we, four. we haven't been canceled yet. No. And you know what's crazier? What's up? My grandmama's still watching the show. <laughs> we love you, grandma. Love you, grandma. Appreciate you for watching. So, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the entrepreneurs and the preneurs of the ship. The risk takers, man. So, yeah, entrepreneurship. Everybody seems to be getting into it now. Right. The the, the risk takers, the go-getters, the hustlers, mm-hmm. the I am sick and tired of nine to fives. Yeah. You know, so let's start off with the definition of an entrepreneur. For those of y'all who just did not go to school. The person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not cheap. It's just, you know, you just risk taking. It's the French word. I think it's French. It's a, I think it was French and English, actually. Okay. Like a little mixture. That's what's To undertake enterprise. That's, that's Mm -hmm. the root word right there. Yeah. Once again, shout out to my little sister for these stickers. I'm going to keep saying that the more y'all see this, but that's beside the point. Yeah, entrepreneurship. So I mean, what? It, I mean, you're an entrepreneur. You got your photography thing going on. You're an entrepreneur. You got your DJ thing going on. Yeah, so Rex, we ain't forget about you. You're an entrepreneur with your and I'm like music. <laughs> my boy be rapping though. Yeah, he's you know cold, what I mean. Man. He cold. He cold. Yeah, but it's kind of funny because when people think about entrepreneurs, the first thing they think of is. <laughs> Pyramid schemes. Yeah. Pyramid schemes, man. I don't I don't really think that's I mean, I don't know. It could to me, I think those pyramid schemes, like you heard about the Primerica and then we were on like a bunch of energy conservation stuff was happening when solar panels was coming in, getting Boy. hot. And then now we on like Bitcoin and Forex and my phone be blowing up. Join my team. Join my team. I'm like, bro. <laughs> and it's crazy because like so when I was younger and I first moved out here. They used to give me all the time because, like, I didn't know how to see them coming, yeah. you know, because they'll try to hit you with the <laughs> sneaking up on you. Man, you know how many times Herbalife would try to get me? Yeah. Herbalife, they were slick with it. Yeah. Because they get somebody fine. They'd be like, you look at that girl like, oh, wait. Yeah. And she's going to talk to you like, oh, you like, you work out. I'm be like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I might work out just a little bit. You know when you get hit with them DMs and it's a fine ass girl and like, hey, what's up? I'm like, yo, bro, I get I get this a lot. We need to collab. Man. Like, Who is this? We need to clap. I, like, I, I do music. I'm like, all right, dope. And then they'd be like, hey, uh, so what else do you do besides DJing? I'm like, you know, other stuff. Hey, uh, you should join my team. Let's make some money together. I'm like, is this music related? Where are we going with this? They're like, join this. <laughs> join our uh, Zoom call tomorrow. Can you? You got time at 5 p.m. tomorrow? Join the Zoom call. I'm like, boy, if you don't get the hell out of my phone before I screenshot your ass, boy. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> I so, hate that shit, man. I so mean, it's kind sorry, of sorry, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's kind of funny because um, yeah. you know Herbalife got me a few times. Um, you know they like I'm thinking it was just you know she she kind of got me with the making me think I'm helping her do workout classes. Yeah, and so I was like, all right, why not? You know what I mean? And she fine, fine, right? She was in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she was fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, let's do some but, workout classes. Do it. Yeah. Right. And so, because, like, she she actually, I met her when I was working at Adidas. Mm-hmm. She, like, stopped me in the shoe aisle or whatever. Now, 
she was like, yeah, come with me here. You got to come to one of our meetings, meet the team, meet everybody else. I didn't realize I was walking into a cult. Yeah. Yeah, they, they be so damn hyped during the meetings. Oh, yeah. But, like, she didn't tell me exactly what she was looking for. So she's like, you know, your friends that need to help working out. So that's what I'm like. I'm looking for friends that are trying to help working out. She's trying to sell these product. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, to each his own. Some I ain't gonna lie, some of the Herbalife stuff be tasting good. Yeah. But it's expensive, you know, I get it. It's overpriced. <laughs> it's way overpriced. But you know what? That's it's just branding, bro. Like right. you know, for instance, Kingdom Concepts. As long as you got branding, you keep the product in the minds of the consumer. That, it don't that, matter what that, price it is. High, that's high quality ace two O. Yeah, they're gonna buy it, you know what I'm saying? It's water's water, but it's the branding behind it. Like Apple. I mean, come on, Google, MacBook, you know, whatever, they, they both do it, but the MacBook is so well branded, it's like people will pay a thousand dollars over like a two hundred dollar laptop. You know what's crazy when you talk about branding? And I'm about to make a lot of y'all mad with this one. How many of y'all know that the same name brand stuff that you get in a grocery store is made as in the same factory where they make the great value? I mean the that's facts. <laughs> like, cause some people be like like, okay, I knew this one girl back in college, right? And if she ever somehow randomly finds out about this podcast and sees this episode, she's going to know it's her. Mm. I don't know how. Like, it would be very funny because I, I haven't, like, talked to her in, like, ages. Uh-oh. But she was the type to be like, yeah, you, yeah, I don't eat great value. That's nasty. It just tastes different. I'm like, but it's, it's made in the same factory. Yeah. Like, they just... You know, the same person who owned, let's say, Velveeta, uh-huh. right, is making money on Velveeta, the great value Velveeta, and Equate. Yeah. Because it's all made under his roof. Just yeah. throwing that out there since we're talking about branding. But it's all brand, just like clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like Walmart clothes, Hanes versus like Gucci. I mean, I'll be honest. Some of, some of the clothing stuff can be different. Even some of the vegetable stuff can be different. But for the most part, it's the same. Unless you're buying the vegetables from somebody's farm, homegrown. Off right. of their own soil, then I see it's different. But like you said, you got to look at where it comes from, research the sticker on the company, you find out they're all in the same, and so, same thing. So when it comes to entrepreneurship, so, you know, it comes across in, you know, many forms, many fashions and everything. Like right now, the main, the hot shit for entrepreneurship right now is social media. Yeah. Right. Now, understand this. Whenever we say what we're about to say, we're not knocking y'all. We really not. You know what I mean? If you feel like, you know, putting your phone right here and doing one of these for TikTok, you know what I'm saying? Doing one of those for TikTok. If if you feel like that's what you got to do to get your money, I'm not going to knock you for it. Uh-huh. I'm just going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you got to do what you do to push your yeah. brain down. I think the TikTok thing, social media, it's a good hustle. It's like you're getting your name out there. You get enough followers. You get enough consistent engagement on your account. Next thing you know, people are reaching out to you to wear their stuff. They're paying you, and now you're an entrepreneur, per se. So, I mean, it's a, right. it's a cool hustle. And you know what's crazy? Like, <laughs> So, you see somebody who does a TikTok video. You're watching it on your phone, and you're watching their video. And it looks dope, right? But mm-hmm. it's crazy because I remember one time. I'm trying to remember where I was. I think it was in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And I saw somebody, like, set their phone down take a few steps back and just start dancing. I'm like, wow, that looks ridiculous. Like watching the making of it. Yeah. And then you see like the finished product and it's like, that's kind of dope. Yeah. You know, but that's also to say that like, you know, the start of anything, people always got a lot to say. Oh yeah. But once it's finished, you know, then you're, 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 you're getting your roses. Yeah. But I mean, that's just how it is, bro. It's like, people don't believe like when you work in a job, You know, everybody thinks that you got to stick with something that's secure, safe and secure, because if you do something that's different, they're going to question you like, like, you know, like when I started doing DJing, I was a full time DJ for like a whole solid year. That's all I did was DJing. And like that was back in 2015. People are like, well, how are you going to pay your bills? Like, you know, what about insurance? What about all that? I'm like, you know, they have programs for entrepreneurs to get their insurance and shit like that canopy insurance like they have a lot of stuff for that i don't know why people just assume that because you're not working a regular job you can't make it don't make any sense because you know what's ironic it's like those folks to be laughing at those people taking the tiktoks and all that 
when those guys blow up, they end up working for them. It's like, do you realize at the end of the day, you're kind of working for an entrepreneur if you're working nine to five? It's like, right. I don't know if y'all realize that, but. And so. to be honest, I really hate when people use the term, why don't you just go get a regular job? Yeah, what's a regular job? Like, please, somebody explain to me, what is a regular job? Well, just a regular nine to five. But I mean, what if I'm doing <laughs> my entrepreneurship it? nine to five? Why can't you just do a regular job yeah. where you just show up, work your 40 hours, and get your paycheck? That's fucking boring, bro. Exactly. I, I honestly, <clears throat> if I was to work in a regular, because I mean, I DJ, then I got the regular job, and you photography, we got our own hustles going on, but it's like we're trying to break out of that. It's like if I'm still, depending on a regular job, I will like go nuts. Because, <laughs> I mean, all right. Because, like, I look at all the jobs I've had, you know, mm-hmm. um, I've had some desk jobs, I've had some warehouse jobs, and. To be honest, I think of all the jobs I've had, the most fun I've ever had actually working two jobs. One, my very first job when I was a DJ at a skating rink and working, like, you know, getting paid mm-hmm. to just skate around. And you like doing it. Right. The only thing I didn't like is find out next time when this podcast. But anyway. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, snap. Okay, fine. I'll snitch. It's nitty gritty, right? I'm a snitch on myself. Oh, yeah. All day. I used to have to wear a green dinosaur costume and dance at kids' birthday parties when I worked at the skating rink. And DJ at the same time? No, no. It was what it was the uh the perk I got for being their best skater. So okay. and it's funny, I used to try to play it off. You know what I mean? Like they'd be like, Oh my god, it's Skato. And then they were like, Wait, weren't you the guy wearing the costume? I'm like, no. No. That guy was way taller than me. Yeah, that <laughs> you know was me. <laughs> what you talking about, kid? But like, you know, take jobs like that, or like when I worked at Adidas, you mm-hmm. know. Those those are like the fun jobs, you know what I mean? It's a lot of Adidas action going on over here. I've just been noticing, like in the intro video, the hat you worked at Adidas. <laughs> Where that sponsorship? I'm just playing, anyway. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, you you, you want to know what's funny? So like, I was at Adidas for like five or six years, right? Uh huh. And confession time, I honestly, I I didn't. I wanted to leave after like four years, mm. like three and a half, four years. I wanted to leave. But I had, like, family and friends using the discount consistently, and I was just like, I'm not going to do that to y'all. Yeah, yeah, they're going to do that, man. They find out you can get hookups, they're going to hit you up, then you're going to have a lot of new friends. But I'm I'm glad you used the word hookup, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're a DJ. You sell your products yes. as, you know, mixing music and, you know, performing while you're, you know, hosting parties and everything. Yes. How do you feel when, like, let's say if it was me, and I'm like, yo, Kane, I got this big party going on, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, how much you charge, and you say, shoot, yeah. I charge 400 for the night. That's yeah. not his price, by the way. Yeah. Is that your price? Uh, My price kind of varies. It used to be that price, but it's All like right. the hookup thing. But, bro. yeah, like, how would you feel, like, me as your homie being, like, how do you feel as, like, homies <sighs> asking other homies who are trying to build up their brand for the hookup. I, that's funny because I made a video about that on my YouTube. It's like I think if a oh, homie asks you, if a homie asks you for a hookup, like now at this age, I think it's kind of disrespectful. But if it's like we were younger, yeah, I'm gonna hook you up. Like no question. Like if you're like early twenties, we, you know, I'm gonna hook you up. But I don't like it when people ask me for hookups. I like to offer it to you. You know what I mean? Right. Like you don't ask for I offer it to you. Because, I mean, you know, let's let's snitch on both of ourselves real quick. Yeah, yeah. So I'm his personal photographer, by the way. Right. For those of y'all that don't know, I'm his personal photographer. And yes, sir. whenever we first started, you know, you know, shooting together and everything, um, I told him, I said, you know, you're, you're going to get the homies discount because, honestly, yeah, I'm doing you a favor by taking these pictures, but you're doing me a favor by giving me an opportunity to work on my craft. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, to me, that's cool. Honestly, if Kane was like, man, dang, like, wait, how does Kane talk? Man, wait, wait, he smiled when he talked. Wow, like, can I not get, like, that discount, you know what I'm saying? Hey, TJ, what's up, man? Can I get that hookup, bro, you know what I'm saying? Right, if if, if he were to do some, like, some some BS like that, I'd kind of, like, I'd be mad, you know what I mean? Because, like, even, even, like, a lot of people I know that ask me for photo shoots for whatever reason, you know, I tell them my price, and they're just like... Yeah, like, uh, like, 
I mean, I mean, if you tell me that you like going through some stuff, but you really need the pictures, yeah. you, just, you know, if you tell me if you, you broke, just say so. If, yeah, if you, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna work with you. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we've been there before. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But yeah, but no, man. like overall, I personally feel like if you you can't sit here and say that you support your friend's business when you're trying to shortcut them. That's facts, man. I mean, come on, you supposed? I think honestly, and again, at this age, you just need to just if they say the price. That's the price, bro. Don't be like, cut it down. Let me get half off, bro. Remember back in the day, we used to... Bro, that was back in the day. We grown as adults now. Right. And <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie. I, I hate seeing, like, the disrespectful stuff of, like, you know, somebody got a clothing brand. They be like, oh, yeah, I got them clothing. I made this shirt right here. It's just $20. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ain't paying $20 for that. But, yeah, yeah, so go pay yeah, yeah. $90 at Express. <laughs> Let me not talk about Express because I just bought this shirt from Express. Yeah. And this is like my first time shopping at Express. Yeah. It's fly. And, I like and, it. And I'll, for, I don't know if y'all can see the X. Wait. Oh, yeah, oh there it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is, bro. But no, on the cool. That'll look good in the nighttime, bro. That's going to shine out. That's dope. You, you know what's crazy? Fresh. So, like, side story. We do that a lot here at the Nitty Gritty Podcast. Yeah. So, first time I walked into Express, right? I think I was like 19. I didn't know what it was. I just moved out here. No, I was out here for a little minute. So I'm, I'm you know, I was like, let me go into Express. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to say I'm cheap. I'm just going to say I'm very frugal with my money. Right. You know what I mean? Dollar word of the day. So, yes, yes, yes. I walk into Express and I was like, dang, this shirt nice. Mm-hmm. How much is I'm looking at like, oh, okay, this is okay. I look at that price. That thing said $45. I said, <laughs> <laughs> You got to think about the tax. That game, they're going to be about $50. And so, like, you know, recently I've been on a desire for a wardrobe change. Mm. And so I uh, I went to Express again Okay, for one reason and one reason only. And honestly, for all of y'all, y'all better not front on me for this because y'all done did the same thing, too. When you see a sign that says 50% off clearance. Yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 look. Yes, sir. This shirt right here, original price, 45 How is that a, no, don't applaud that. <laughs> yeah. But how much did Loco pay? 15 Hey, you know what I'm saying? You would never know. I would never know if you didn't tell me. So, you know what I'm saying? Look expensive, shop cheap. That's the way to do it, y'all. That's the way you but, go. Yeah, um, man. Um, I think, I think oh, my bad, my that's, bad. that's a good that's a good way to go about it. You said look expensive, shop cheap. You know what I mean? And I think that when you're in entrepreneurship, I think that's how you have to, especially when you're starting out, that's how you have to be, man. Because I'm not really, I think, like, like again, like what you're doing is, is how you should start out. Like, I think when folks get into entrepreneurship, they always want to, like, try to look expensive, shop expensive. And it's like you just have to start from the ground up. You know what I mean? Just be very frugal with what you're doing at the beginning because don't, stuff don't, don't take my word. Hey, I had this word, <laughs> word of the night, man. You know what I'm saying? And and personally, I think because of that, when folks get into entrepreneurship, they try to look expensive. They try to be expensive all the time. And at the end of the day, it don't work out for them. They just plateau. It's like, bro, you got to just be frugal. We're going to use that word a lot. I, bro, I got to take that from you. And it's like, bro, like, where's the Other actual hustle? That uh, Kane took frugal from me. You know what we should do? <laughs> We should do because I'm looking at the camera right now. Yeah, we gonna ask this big ass pimple on my face what he thinks. <laughs> where, where John, we mic? got another mic. John, we got another mic. I'm gonna ask this big ass <laughs> pimple. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> <laughs> "You gotta do him like that, John, boy." Oh snap! Oh man! But no, so like all jokes aside, like, do you? I feel I do feel like you have to look apart. Whenever you're doing your entrepreneurship, depending on what you do, because I mean, let, yeah. let's, let's talk. Let's 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 go back to the old days, right? Where like, if you weren't doing door to door sales, you were not a bona fide man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you had people that was going around selling Tupperware, yeah, silverware, dishware, underwear. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it wasn't underwear, but first off, could you imagine mm-hmm. if that lifestyle was like that today? Yeah. Like where you had like 20, 30 jobs that were going around, going door to door, you know, selling products. Could you imagine like who would get blasted today? Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Especially so, with COVID nowadays, you'd be like, yeah, just had to put it on a stick and just reach it over that door. No, that's not what I mean. Like, sir, I have these uh, Tupperware. <laughs> Boom. Oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, I'm, that I'm, too, I'm, of course. Yeah. That happened back in the day, too. It was both ways, you know? So, first off, anybody watching, if your parents, grandparents ever did that, shout out to them because that is something I would never be yeah. able to do. But then it, it moves on because, I mean, then you got like the ladies who do like the Avon, right? Uh huh. Which, I mean, I'm a snitch on myself again. If you was going to put me in a pink Cadillac Escalade, mm. shoot, I would have been. At 40 old ladies, let me put that makeup on your face real quick. Let me yeah. get that up to that uh, triple platinum diamond gold. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so then, you know, it evolves from that to, you know, then the world of technology comes up. So what they're going to start doing? Selling technology parts and stuff. You know what I mean? And then I feel like nowadays, you know, your entrepreneurships are just catering to what people are demanding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back in the day when they were doing the herbal life, that's really during that time when people were just obsessed with trying to be fit. You said catering to what people are demanding. Yes. Oh, that's business. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Because like nowadays, what are people demanding? I mean, they they want to look sexy. They want to look. Um, they want to feel accepted. You know, they want to lose weight. Oh, it's it's one more thing in a whole different direction. But cryptocurrency. You know what I mean? People like messing yeah. with digital currency. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because right now the hot shit to do, and I know a lot of y'all watching this do this, you know, I'll talk to y'all about this a couple of times, mm-hmm. is the stock investing. You know what I mean? Playing with numbers like. Oh, yeah. You know, I got. I Most got, people don't even know how to fucking do that shit, bro. No, they no. a lot of people don't. Holy but there, there are some people who do. Like, first off, shout out to my boy, Sky. You know what I mean? He yes, did yes. that. Um one of my homegirls, she was, I don't know if she still does that. I'm pretty sure she does because I don't, I don't think she want to go back to work, but still. Oh, yeah. But, like, you know, that that's, like, the hot shit to do now. Man, the you crypto, know? I hear so many people doing that. And go for it. Go for your hustle. But you know what's funny, man? I had, I'm not going to say this person's name, but they would always tell me they're making so much off of crypto, so much off of these stocks. But then I invite them out to Casanova. You know, fifty dollar cover charge, and they complain about a fifteen dollar cover charge. You just said fifty dollar cover charge. Fifteen dollar. Okay. I'm like, even if it was fifty, if you're making three thousand a a week off of crypto, Mm-mm. yeah. Mm-mm. Listen, let For me just go on one a- night. You shouldn't be complaining about no fifty dollar cover charge. Let, let me go on the record and say this: I could have Oprah Winfrey's bank account right now, and I would not pay no damn fifty dollar cover charge. Well, she's paying like way more than that for what she's doing. I don't care. I can I can be a multi gazillionaire and have a pack of ramen noodles, Oriental shrimp, beef. I dare y'all to say something about it. Yeah, yeah. I would still have a pack of those ramen noodles in my pantry if if I had that kind of money. I could be a king of a country mm. and still keep some um, uh, uh, Smucker's uncrustable sandwiches. But that's just me. I'm humble. Okay. So, um, but no, I see what you're saying. To each his own, I probably <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I but, just I just don't. I'll oh, go ahead, go ahead. My bad. No, 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 no. You you were making a point. I just think that uh, like the Bitcoin thing. I think that's a good entrepreneurial pursuit. Like, you know, forex. It's it's cool, but it's not. I don't know. I'm just not really for it. I think a true entrepreneur is somebody who they have their product and they can name the price, set the price, market their own stuff. Like DJ and photography. You you set your price. You're not working for like. Herbalife, no offense to anybody doing Herbalife, but I can't get the product and sell a candy bar of Herbalife for a dollar if I if I wanted to. I mean, you know what I mean. If you really think about, it, if you have a proper hustling mindset, you really could. You know what I mean. But you're gonna so, lose money because you have to pay for the product. Well, you're gonna lose money regardless whenever you're doing entrepreneurship because no matter what you're doing, you're taking a risk. You are investing into yourself, and you are hoping that you know whoever, like whoever you're gearing the product towards buys it like let's 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 talk let's talk about oh, yeah. youtubers for example well, well see i know that but if the product <clears throat> costs 15 dollars and you're selling it for a dollar you're losing money you can't name the price you have to if i made the candy bar in my own shop and it's mine i can name it whatever price i want but if you're buying it from herbalife you have to stock up right each box costs you a certain amount of money then you resell it so if it's if it's like 30 box 30 dollars a box you can't sell it for a dollar. You're going to lose. That's that's blatantly losing money. First things you know first, I mean? let me also go on the record to say, I would have loved to do a fundraiser with you. Yeah. 
Boy, we would <laughs> we would make a lot of money also because I mean like I'm I like I like doing fundraisers, but when it comes to that stuff, I feel like. I don't know. It's just I don't think it's like true entrepreneurship. You can't name the price. Like you're a photographer, you can name any price you want. You okay. can you can do it for it. if you if if you were around a bunch of millionaires and they said just name a price, they gave you like a blank check answer. You said a million dollars for a week worth of photo shoots, and they agreed to it. You're worth a million dollars now. So then let me ask you this. So, so a lot of people who do these. Pyramid schemes. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people that Shout do these pyramid y'all. schemes, right? <laughs> And I'm only saying that if it's sound, if it's a, if it's offensive to say is that offensive to say that pyramid scheme? I mean, it is what it is. Okay, so. it is what it is. So, if those people who do that, you know, because you were talking about naming your price and you're still technically working for somebody else, they honestly mm-hmm. they have this mindset that you're owning your own business by doing it. Oh, you're a business owner for sure, but you're not <clears> like <throat> you don't have control mm-hmm. over it fully. So then you're not a business owner. Well. Like, let's say I could buy a Taco Bell, and I'm a business owner of that Taco Bell. I bought the franchise, but I can't change anything about the formula. I can't change the name of nothing on there. I just own the business. I mean, let's you just, I mean, okay, then let's keep it G, because McDonald's changed the formula Sprite. Yeah, but it <clears throat> it was the board, not the people owning the franchises so so then because i mean let's let's kick it to like this all right let's say you get high enough and we won't use another product because I, I feel like we're talking too much <laughs> shit about <our> life. <laughs> we ain't we don't mean this shit on really you know I, I respect what they do i'm just kind of i gotta keep it nitty-gritty with them you know what i'm saying and I'm, if i'm gonna keep it nitty-gritty <laughs> old girl that found me at adidas i'm on your head oh snap watch so, out uh, <laughs> watch out Mm. Nah, bro. But um, but no. So like, if they're saying that, yeah, you're basically owning your own business if you move up high enough in this company. Okay. The reason why I'm had to disagree with that is um, you're not. You just having a whole bunch of employees under you. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't sit here and say, okay, well, shoot. Since I got X amount of people under me, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say we're gonna raise the price of the product. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say we're gonna lower the price of the product because honestly, even if you had your own franchise, yeah. Taco Bell, you really can pick your price. Yep. You know what I mean? Typically, most people are gonna keep it around the same, but like, let's be real. You can make a five dollar box six dollars. You can legally do that. Why do you think stuff is more expensive in California? Well, I mean, I think that's a state thing. I don't think it's like a business thing. I don't think it's just a state thing. They, it's cost of living stuff, man. They're they trying to keep up with the trends, man. I guess so. I don't know. See, that's his way of saying, local, you an idiot. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No, trust me, trust This is nitty gritty. I'm going to do my research on it because I, I think it's a state thing, but it's like... The, the, actually, you know what? You know what I mean? How about, how about this? All right. We're going to give ourselves homework. We're going we gonna to look this up. Yeah. And next time we meet up at, you know, our usual spots where we meet up, yeah. we got enemies. Going Blueberry Mint. Lemon mint, double apple. Yes, just just <laughs> snitch, just snitch it then, just snitch it then. <laughs> but no, like I actually, I actually want to look this up and like see, because I mean, it's interesting, ain't it? It is very interesting. It's like you know, like why, why, why is it that you know gas is more expensive than other states and other? You know what I'm saying? Why, why are the prices changed? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, man, that is kind of weird. Yeah, but so you know, one one thing. I want to challenge this audience to do, and um, actually, better yet, let me let me load up the Instagram story for this one because we definitely want you know our fans to to be involved in what we got going on. All right, yes, sir. So I'm loading this up right here. Yeah, that's right. Oh, we are doing this live, ladies. We are and gentlemen. actually doing this live. We are in the middle of an episode right now. Yes, sir. We want to know from you guys. Hit us in the DMs. The funniest answer you gonna get a free cup of water. Hey, it's nice and cold too. <laughs> Shout out to the trust up. Shout out to the trust up. But we want to know right now, if you're doing entrepreneurship, right? At what point do you feel like you can leave your nine to five or ten to eight, or depending on how long your lunch break is? But like, for real, be you know, honest. Be honest. You know what I mean? At what point do you feel like I'm stacking up enough money consistently to leave my job? Mm. And we want to know the top best answers. We definitely gonna feature on the next episode, and you are gonna get this good bottle of water too. <laughs> but no, definitely hit us in the DMs because we really want to know. All right. 
So that's a good one. That is absurd. So when when do you think? What what do you think? When do you think it's ready to to put in that two week notice and tell everybody I'm out this motherfucker? So for me, I would personally say, oh man. For me, I would personally say like it would have to be when your paychecks from your actual job don't even mean anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you, because I, I was at a point in time with bartending, right? I used to be a bartender, mm-hmm. you know, and I was at a point in time to where like if I really wanted to take that risk, I could have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But responsibilities has a way of punching me in the face mm, and putting yeah. big ass pimples on my face. Oh, no. <laughs> Shout out to our special guest. Shout out to our special guest. What's Ain't his that... name again? He don't got no name. His name about to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you got a special guest with no name, bro? <laughs> but I agree, man. Once those, like if you're doing your whatever and you're getting way more than your <clears throat> normal job, um, uh, Maybe it's just time. Just take that risk. I honestly think if you're seeing the income coming in, you feel like you're good at it. You feel like you can really do it. Do it, especially if you don't have any like, you know, really like big, uh, what do you call it? You know, just liabilities or whatever. Just take that risk. I think everybody should just do it, man. Just prepare. What I think, honestly, before somebody takes a step, yeah, make sure you know if you get more money than your day job, that's a no brainer. But get that savings account up. I think get enough in your savings mm. account where in case you do take that jump and let's say you take that jump and then COVID hits, now your whole business scrap where well, you got that savings, at least a year's worth of savings, rent, bills, car note, uh, food, all that, a year's, a year's worth. And then you You're not going to have a year's worth of food nowadays, bro. <laughs> <laughs> at least, you know, um, um, enough money for you to buy, <laughs> support yourself for a whole year of food. You know what I mean? Because like, all right, this is, this is what I would say. All right. <laughs> Lears was a ramen, so, you know, we, we can. <laughs> so, because, like, last year, around this time last year, not September? Yeah, around September last year. Okay. Um, I had the, the the pleasure of actually sitting with somebody who started off as an entrepreneurship, and now they're doing movies and TV shows on BET. Yeah. I'm not going to name drop because I don't want to be that person. Hey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure he's watching if you are. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, so like he he was he was one of the people that pioneered tick I mean not tick damn it, what was that app called? Vine. Oh snap. He was yeah, he was in that group of people that pioneered here, all right. Is does he happen to be a son of a very famous singer? God damn. Why why are you asking me these tough questions like it's nitty gritty? I I, th- I think I know who you're talking about, maybe, but I'm not gonna say it though. Yeah, I somebody mentioned something like that. Oh, okay, yeah. Shots up. All right. So anyway, Beep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah, we he we actually hung out at at Casanova. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a good friend of ours is a f- good friend of his, and he was like, "You do photography." He's like, "Yeah, I want you to meet my boy." Ha <laughs> ha. So yeah. he flew out his boy. Ha <laughs> ha. Down here, yeah. You know what I mean. So we were talking, and I was just like, "Dang!" Like you, when he was telling me like whenever they they pioneered Vine, it was unintentional. Yeah. You know what I mean. And I asked him. I said, "So, <clears throat> so like, at what point did you realize like this is it?" You know what I mean. And he he was just like, you know, whenever, one, obviously the money flow. Mm. And two, when it's just like, I'm being successful at this without even trying. You know what I mean? And he's liking it. Man, shoot. He he did that and moved to Instagram. Mm. And he just did two movies. Mm. um, You know, did a few shows on BET and whatnot. He's doing stand-up comedy right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So And and it's crazy because, like, you know, I'm I'm sitting there with this dude, and I'm like, "Shit, melodies <laughs> from heaven, right. rain down, I'm giving them blessing." Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's but, what I be feeling like. Rub, rub some of that on me. Let me hold your hand for like ten seconds, real quick, and get some of that knowledge, real quick. So I think one thing we should also address, <laughs> honestly, and I really feel like this is a huge problem, right? Mm. I'm gonna ask your opinion on this before. 
I address this. How would you feel if you as a successful DJ have an up and coming DJ ask you for advice and tips? Are you going to give him all your tips or just be like, uh, uh-huh, you know, just do this, talk to him. Oh talk man, to him. that's a good one. I, I give him something, man. I give him a little tips and advice. I just don't like when people come at me. Like if it's like, Hey man, what kind of program you use? Oh, this and this and that. Okay. Hey man, um, what do you think is a good for this? This and this and that. Okay. That's it. But when folks come to me like, Hey, can I do some lessons with you? Can I can you teach me how to do this? Can you teach can you come sit down for me with like three hours and show me how to do all that? And they ain't trying to pay or nothing like that, then I honestly that's kind of disrespectful. So mm. I'm like no to that. <clears throat> okay, so I, I see You know what I mean? Okay, okay. So we have we have a partial agreement and a partial disagreement. Mm-hmm. All right, because one, honestly, you are an asshole if you feel <laughs> like you as a successful entrepreneur cannot teach the next generation. Yeah, for a cost, because that's what they'll do to you. You buy their books, you buy their seminars, you buy their Zoom calls. You got to pay for that. Oh, I wasn't saying that. Oh, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> We have cost cane over here, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, because like I, I really, I get I get very irritated when I see people that are very stingy with their knowledge, you know. Yeah, and I mean, there's it's very rare that you see somebody who went full on entrepreneurship and just made it on their own. Mm. You know what I mean? You're always you're always gonna have help. You know, and it's not necessarily walking the person to success, but at least showing them the path and providing wisdom. Okay. It don't cost to provide wisdom. You know Again, I mean? like I said, they charge for that. No, 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 no. They charge for lessons on the skill. Um. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Disagree. Okay. Okay. To, to, to a certain extent. <laughs> watch this. You, okay, check me out. Let's say you used to DJ at ABC Hookah Lounge, mm-hmm. and ABC Hookah Lounge messed you over after X amount of time. Okay. Where would you read in a successful person's book saying never DJ at ABC Hookah Lounge? I mean, you're not going to read a book, but if you're going to ask me for it, you book a session. No, I mean, if they're just like, you know I mean, if some, so if someone's like, hey, DJ Kane, like, did you not like DJing at ABC Hookah Lounge? Are you going to charge them to say, no, nah, I didn't like it? Oh, yeah, like simple stuff like that. But if it's stuff that can really like help your career, like, hear these connects, like real wisdom, like, I'm talking about stuff that, like, most people that you, you get all this information from, they're just going to tell you, like, common sense type shit. But think about this. <clears throat> Even to be in the same room as most of these people, you're paying to get in these rooms. Like when yeah, I went to lying. Atlanta, when I went to Atlanta, Georgia to meet the producers from like, you know, G Unit, you know, I met Gary V. That costs money to be in the same room with him. Now, since I'm in the room with him, I can oh, ask him that uh, stuff. Yeah, I can ask him you, anything. You better get your money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to pay for that time. You know, it, it costs because <clears throat> these people think, you know, and, and if you do catch him, let's say I run into, um, you know, let's hypothetically say I ran into like uh, Joe Rogan. We walking out the studio. He's just right there about the, you know, he's on the phone waiting on his Uber. Hey, what's up, Joe Rogan? Uh, What do you think about this and this and that? Okay, you got lucky. But most of the time to meet him, you got to pay to be in his vicinity. You know what I mean? It's just how it is. Right. But <clears throat> I guess our disagreements is based on lack of clarity in the situation. You know Beep-boop. what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, bro. That I had to say that one. But go ahead, my 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 good brother. I <laughs> don't like you. <laughs> you still my boy. I just don't like you. It, it just came out, bro. So um oh my god. <laughs> Nittygrittypodcast.com. Come check us out. You know what I'm saying? Local DJ came regular. <laughs> Get it. But you saying that like we about to go off air. <laughs> nah, man. I just have to throw it out there. Y'all know where we can find us. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let uh, me get my composure. How do they do this show on the radio station? They cracking up and they just get their composure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
but no, so so me, I'm a little bit different because I've had other people who are photographers just come up to me and just say, hey, what kind of camera do you use? What kind of software do you use? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I like to do uh, motion edits. And I've had people ask me about, you know, how to do that. And I think to a certain extent, me personally, I I don't mind teaching the craft. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't mind sharing a little bit of knowledge. Yeah. Now, at the same time, if you really know me, you know that I'm competitive. Mm -hmm. And if you really know me, you'll know that I'll help you get there. But when you're there, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, you want competition to keep your your skills sharp. Exactly. Not literally. I just want to know that some people were thinking <laughs> like, "Yo, this nigga local. Wow, you're really local, local. That's nah, but that's I mean, a good mindset. You want to train them up, but you still gonna work your ass off, right? You you you, you gonna work your ass off and yeah. uh, and understand because like I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. So my boy, Mister Vince Singh. Hey. And if you know about Lone Wolf Images, then you know who Vince Singh is. And if you know about Lone Wolf Images, you have been rocking with me for a minute. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I feel like with that one dude who be doing the interview, what's the name? Uh, Nardwar? Nard- Nard- with the uh, yeah, the funny hair. Golf hat. Yeah. And he yeah. just be knowing everything about everybody. Bro, bro. Creepy. I would probably, I would not. If he, yeah. like, I feel like he would be interviewing me and be like, sports cuts? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but but no, so like, you know, me and Vince, we used to be business partners and respectfully went separate ways. And he said, um, you know, he he wanted to start his own photography to do his own photography his way. Mm-hmm. It's cool. It's all love there. You know what I mean? But at the same time, that love comes with me killing him because he's going to try to keep up with me. Mm-hmm. And Vince, I know you're watching. You know what I mean? Oh. You saw what Scar did to Mufasa? Oh, shit. Good, because we're not in the same movie. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, but no, you thought like, it was going there, but nah. But no, nah, like I, I joke with Vince about that. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. that's just like my mindset. I don't I don't mind helping people because I've dealt with people that are just like hella stingy on their stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Now mind you, you have every right to be. It's your knowledge. You share it how you want to share it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's not yeah. good to be completely stingy because, bro, in <clears throat> the DJ business, it's like everybody's stingy. It's like, now me, again, like, I don't mind giving wisdom, but when it comes to, like, people asking for a lot of my time, you know, I need to be compensated, I feel. But, compensated. Yeah, I think a lot of people, <laughs> when it comes to, like, the stinginess, it's like, bro, like you said, I'm going to help you get there, but we gon' we going to compete. And that's what I think DJs need to be doing more. It's like, help these young cats get into the game, <clears throat> and then they're going to make you better because if they show you up, what are you going to do? You're going to go back to the studio, you're going to work, you gonna get better, so it's like we, it just elevates the whole culture, you know. Right. So, and see, you know, for for me personally, you know what I mean. Um, one thing I got to say about all entrepreneurs, um, your level of discipline is off the charts. You know, facts. Um, and I, it's crazy because I, I listened to a song that made me rethink the definition of discipline. It was um ah oh, dang what is oh what is this guy's name um Alan Watt oh yeah <clears throat> the uh, philosopher yeah shout out Alan Watt shout rest, out to Alan Watt rest in peace man if he was alive I'd love to have a drink and a meal with him yeah but um you know he said that um, discipline is a form of expression he'd rather use the word skill you mm. know what I mean yeah. And when I listened to that speech, I was just like, dang. Like, I don't completely agree, but if I'm not going to agree, I'd at least rather say you have enough evidence to make your statement make sense. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> but, but no, to all the, di- um, to all the, I almost said disciplines. To, to all, all the entrepreneurs out there. Right. To all the entrepreneurs out there. Well, I thought you bought that. To all my, <laughs> I thought I saw your hands, but I was like, to all my entrepreneurs out there. So anyway, to all my entrepreneurs out there. <laughs> to all my entrepreneurs. <laughs> hey, who DJ is this? 
You know, hey John, just put the camera on me. All right, we just go, we gonna, we gonna take John. Right. Just put the camera on me. Me and the me and the special guest right here. All right, we gonna... Shout out to our special guest. Shout out to our special guest. He ain't said nothing this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, like real real talk to all the entrepreneurs out there. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. All right, mm. bad days, good days. Keep it going. You know what I mean. Don't let. Especially don't let other people's opinions stop you. Oh, yeah. You know, keep in mind, someone once told Jay-Z that he was trash. Someone once told Kanye that he was trash. Can you believe that? Can you, I mean, Look it up. That's crazy. It is It is very crazy, you know? Yeah. Like, somebody, somebody looked at Michael Kors and said, your product will never sell. They said, Michael Kors, that's boo-boo. Then look, look now. Today. Oh, I, I thought you was calling my bag. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I'm but saying, I'm saying, but my mama bought me this bag. <laughs> boy, if you don't chill out. <laughs> no, I'm saying what they used to say. Michael Kors right. is hot, bro. Because, but <laughs> but no, just just stay on it, you know. Yeah. One thing that actors and actresses do, uh, they have this mindset that you may not think I'm good, but I know I'm good. Yeah. You know, that's a mindset I had to learn as a photographer, you know, because I've, I've dealt with a lot of criticism with yeah. my photography. Like, oh man, this picture right here. If you just were to and if and if and if now that a little bit, yeah, that picture would be perfect. And you know what I say? Uh, I don't give a damn. Are they photographers too, or just people, regular people? Both. Oh, uh. you know, because like honestly, even even with the person that I was speaking on earlier, believe it or not, he didn't like my photos at first. Mm. Like he he said he said my pictures were too vibrant. He said they were vibrant as hell. Watch it, watch it. You ready? Okay. Yeah, you gotta. And I and I and I I, I, I took it personally. Oh <laughs> snap! I mean, oh snap! I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, he he he's in a place where I want to be in my life. Yeah, you know what I mean. But at the same time, it's just like, all right, yeah, you have this opinion. <clears throat> But like, even if someone has this opinion of like your product sucking, you're gonna have 150 people who rock with you. You yeah. know what I mean? So you can never let one uh-huh. opinion just define your work or define your product. Mm-hmm. But is he at least giving you constructive criticism on like it's vibrant? But I mean, I'm not talking about like the other guy who's just telling you to do all that. But he did show like maybe just one or two suggestions to <clears throat> make it better. Um, not exactly. Which mm-hmm. I appreciated it. No, no, I really, I, I really appreciated it because okay. like I don't know why, but I felt obligated to make him. Like acknowledge my work, you know yeah. what I mean. I felt I, so I, you're I an artist, this. right? And so I'll show you. I'll show you this cane. You can keep your damn mouth shut. <laughs> so I don't know what local talking about, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll show you this right here. Room, uh, room. that's hot. Yeah, I sent him. I sent him these, and that was his response. Okay. Oh, oh the rest is just me promoting the podcast, bro. <laughs> okay But yeah like That that response right there It meant a lot I don't know what it was About that Like Yeah Cause I wasn't getting Those kind of responses At first Yeah You know what I mean And so So yeah he gave me Like a little bit of const- His constru- constructive criticism Were like Examples of like Stuff that he likes But it's like I didn't start doing The photography To To, to please what he likes And you guys mm-hmm. Didn't start doing Your entrepreneurships To please one person And if you yeah. did well, I, yeah, the constructive criticism thing, especially us being creatives, artists, and stuff like that, I feel like it's tough to take at times because some people do go hard. Some people are, like, you know, too honest. But um, I take it all. Like, with my DJ stuff, some people say that, oh, like, you know, you could have played more hits. You could have played this. I take note of everything. And sometimes I'll disagree with people flat out. But it's like I always listen because it's like may, if that one person is thinking like that, it's like 30 other people coming to this club probably thinking close to what he or she's thinking. So I'll try to incorporate a little bit in it to test it out to see if, hmm, maybe I can, I don't know. It's just, I think, you know, people, you you do make your craft for you. Like you're not catering to everybody or one particular person. But it's like if you're throwing your craft out there and like folks are giving you feedback, then I mean, maybe you could take some of it into consideration, but I wouldn't take everybody's suggestions. You know what I'm saying? 
you could take what mm-hmm. you feel like is necessary to grow. Because so, it's up to you. you. You're the you're the boss man of your craft. So okay, I got a I got a nitty gritty question for you. Oh, here we go, nitty gritty, nitty gritty. All right. So, what would you say is the fine line between constructive criticism and somebody just being an asshole? Oh, that's a man. That's a good one right there. Mm. Let me get low. Because, like, so, for so me, trust up. Because, like, mm. let's say somebody were to make a very strong comment. Mm-hmm. Right, that just says, <clears throat> I've, 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 I've used you as enough. I'm gonna use myself. Mm-hmm. Someone says, Loco, your pictures suck, mm. and, and that, then turn around like and then turn around and say, You need to work on this. Mm. Right now, that comment right there, would you take that as constructive criticism or them being an asshole? Okay, so. <clears throat> I would take it as like, okay, depending on who the person is, because some people I know talk like that, but let's just say it's just general. Yeah, the approach was, you know, it could be kind of come across as rude, but the follow up, your picture suck, you need to do this. Okay, what they follow up with? Because, you know, it, okay. I dated a girl who was doing <laughs> modeling, right? Like uh, for, uh, what's that clothing line? Um, uh, I forgot what it was. It's always next to the Pac Sun in Wichita Falls. Y'all, if you're from Wichita Falls, you know what I'm talking Don't about. Nobody know what that. <laughs> but like in that field, it's like they would tell you you're too short, you're too this, your hair is too that, you're that. They're just straight that's, up blunt with you. That's anywhere when it comes to modeling, though. Yeah. But that, that, that's not a fair example. I mean, but be <laughs> honest, that's anywhere in business. Because if they say your shit sucks, you need to do this, then that. Is constructive criticism. It came across rude, but it is kind of that, constructive. That's still an unfair comparison because you got models being critiqued on genetic appearance as opposed to something that you created. You like, got DJs being critiqued on how they look. Like, they may not want a female DJ. You, they may not want this. I'm telling you, it's everything, bro. Time out. I'm going to sound ignorant as hell. <laughs> and by ignorant, I mean without knowledge. You really got places not booking DJs because they're women? Uh, there's people that are very... Like I'm okay. That's fire for another subject. But there's people that want a certain crowd. Like for instance, if you had an Indian wedding, and I'm a black DJ, it's Indian DJ. We both cold, and they book him over me. Why is that? He probably related. No, like, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There's people but that I mean, really okay, so they that- really critique you on what you are. Let's say okay, you're doing this, but you should be doing that. Like if they come across say this shit suck, but the, if they follow up with that. I think that's constructive. It came across rude, but it is constructive. As long as what okay. they follow up with is something that's helpful, you know? All right, so what if they followed up with something that is, like, very straight to the point? Like, if okay. I were to say, Kane, your DJing sucks. Okay. Fix your transitions. Okay, then that's that's not constructive. Now, if you say, fix your transitions, I got this website that got this. Okay, now I see where you're going with this. And then they're gonna be like, "Sir, that's gonna be uh, ninety nine ninety nine plus tax." <laughs> the information is in my book. You can either PayPal me, Cash App, or Zelle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So then now we 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 kind of talked about you know the difference between being a dick or asshole. Sorry, and you know constructive criticism. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. <clears throat> you know so. You ever, like, like, because we were talking about nine to fives. Mm. We're going to kind of get off topic of entrepreneurship for a second. What normalized nine to five? Like, what what normalized nine to five, Mm. five days a week? Eight hour work days. Eight hour work days, two days off. I think that was back in the, what was it? Was that after World War One or something like that? They had like a labor movement, and they had to. It was like eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, and then eight Industrial hours Revolution time. Yeah, I think it was around that time, was it? Something like that. But yeah, what, they what, that was the Industrial Revolution, right, John? Industrial Revolution. Yeah, Industrial. Yeah. So it was like eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, eight hours to submit your family. But it never you know, was that because you got to drive to work, got to drive home. Because yeah, actually, <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, that was at the time where. You can be a little kid mm. and have a four hundred one k. Isn't that crazy? Little kid in the milk factory or on the field. Yeah, little kids. Cause like, 
You know, and then and then it's crazy because like I didn't hear about this until like a few years ago. Uh uh-huh. now they have the four by ten. The four by <clears> ten. Which is you work four days for ten hours. Mm. And okay. um actually I had a job where I had that schedule. Like I thought it was kinda dope to have like three days off until they didn't give me the three days consecutively. That's interesting. I kinda like that. No, you don't. Four by ten? Hmm. I mean, okay, like it it has its it has its ups and downs, honestly. But it's like mm-hmm. one of those jobs where it's like, yeah, you get a four by ten, but uh, can a brother get like an extra time on a lunch? <laughs> yeah. So the you know lunches I mean? they still an hour. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But we are at <laughs> the five minute mark, y'all. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so- now it's time for so long. Now nah, I'm joking. So we gonna get ready to close it out, shut it down. Let's do our final thoughts real quick. Kane, what you got for the crowd? Uh, so, yeah, man, DJKane.com, <clears throat> DJCAYNE. We're producing a new Sunday night. If you guys are in Dallas, Texas, man, every Sunday night, 7 to 11, pull up. I said final thoughts, bro, not where to find you. <laughs> uh, final thoughts? Final thoughts on what we talked about, man. What's up? What you, what's, what's, your, what's your conclusive thoughts about what we talked about? Honestly, my final thoughts is, bro, if you're an entrepreneur, you're setting your price. If you're a business owner, you're doing your thing too, but you're not setting your price. Um, I mean, and also, fuck what anybody else says about you. You do what you want. Whatever we're seeing on here, you could take what take it with a grain of salt. You could take it, whatever. Do whatever you want to do as long as it makes you happy. And if anybody's hating on what you're doing, uh, I mean, you need to stop hanging around them, I guess, and be around folks that really support your craft. Uh, I agree with that a whole wholeheartedly. Um, you know, we said a lot of things on tonight's episode. You know what I mean? We heavily do respect entrepreneurs. We are entrepreneurs ourselves. Um, also, if the if the term pyramid scheme is offensive, please, like, let me know. Mm. But anyway. <laughs> it is what it is, man. It is what it is, man. We're not you know hating on y'all, nah. but it's nitty gritty, bro. It it's, is, what it's, you, it's, no. it's nitty gritty. But, uh, <laughs> but no, on the cool, stay on the grind, you know, like, don't rest. You know, don't settle. Yeah. You know what you're worth. Mm-hmm. And if they don't like it, so what? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Signing off, though. This your boy, Mr. L-O-K-O himself, Mr. Loco, a.k.a. You may or may not have seen me at Walmart. I don't know. A.k.a. his grandma watching this right my here. Gra- my grandma was watching this show, and I'm pretty sure she would be proud of us. We only said 16 cuss words. 16. <laughs> Let me throw one more real quick. Yeah, boy, are you I better know. than <laughs> This is your boy, DJ Kane. You know what I'm saying? Every Sunday night, like I said, pull up. Check us out. Check us out on Thursdays. Once again, also, if you have an episode suggestion, Hit us up in the comments. Slide into the DMs. You know where to find us. Instagram at Nitty Gritty Podcast. We need to work on the Twitter. Yeah. We need to have like. Y'all still tweeting? (laughs) If y'all still tweet, if if you think we should create a Twitter, also let us know. If y'all want Nitty Gritty thoughts on Twitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? But hit us up in the comments. Hit us up in the DMs. If you have an episode suggestion, do that. Mm. I think we should also have a contest for like a guest. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Nitty, Find out next time on Nitty Gritty Podcast. <laughs> also, yeah, hit us up, man. Much love. We out. Back in them uncomfortable places, we only hustle for greatness. Franklin and Ulysses' faces, I'm taking it to new places. Call this divine immigration, more like divine intervention. You like the vibe, but can't chase it, I know. 